This time on Finnegan's Garage, three days of drag boat racing on the Colorado River, and the whole thing is brought to you by the good folks at Wirecare. Need some peaceful relaxation time? Want to spend your retirement in the beauty of nature? Make Parker, Arizona a yearly stop in your RV. Our campgrounds offer luxury RV parking, swimming pools, pickleball courts, hiking, fishing, and much more. Come and enjoy the moments and make memories and friends that'll last a lifetime. Relax in Parker, Arizona, where the desert meets the tranquility of the Colorado River. Got into Oceanside, California. I am at RV Fun Center, where one of my oldest, dearest friends, Joe Cole, works. And we're here because for the last, I don't know, about a month, Joe and some of my other good friends have been shuffling my jet boat from one place to another, trying to get it ready so we can go racing. Joe is kind of taking charge of making sure all the things that we thought were wrong with the boat have been corrected. So some of the stuff we repaired over the winter was just replacing things. Like this boat is only, it's not quite seven years old, but seven years is long enough for every hose in the boat to become junk. Seven years is long enough for the wheel bearings on the boat trailer to fall seize apart, up. to seize up and have a wheel nearly fall off. Oh, when you fill them with water and then you don't drive it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, she's a beaut, I love her. And I still feel like I got a good deal, even though we've had to replace a lot of stuff on well, this boat. let's put it this way. The boat's named Side Chick. Side Chicks take a lot of attention and money, Mike. Yes. <laughs> and rarely do they treat you right, but I feel like it's gonna be different no. this time. Now we can go. Let's go boat racing. This is gonna be fun, rush hour with a 30 foot long trailer behind a crew cab long bed truck. Two, three hours, we'll all make it across. Railroad. Okay, this truck rides pretty rough. I don't wanna be super judgmental about it, but I got a fully loaded trailer behind me and this thing still rides rough. And it's only a three quarter ton truck. I didn't rent the one ton. And that's too much trailer for a half ton. I don't care that we're about to sit in traffic. I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want to go boat racing with my friends. We're about to leave the beautiful seaside community or rather Oceanside community of Oceanside, California. And we're about to head east through the desert to the beautiful riverfront community of Parker, Arizona. 
where they have not only casinos and campgrounds, but they have drag boat racing. We made it. This is Parker, Arizona. Specifically, this is the La Paz County Campground, which is next to Pirate's Den, which is where the actual race is happening. We're gonna enter two to three classes, at least two. We will do the six second, thousand foot long bracket class. And that's really not the one I'm interested in because we have to slow the boat down to run that class. But they are having a heads up, eighth mile, anything goes shootout here. That's the one I'm interested in because we don't have to slow down for that. It's just figure out how to go as fast as we can for 660 feet. And I don't know how many people are entered in that class, but I made sure to talk enough smack on the internet that uh, even though I don't know that I can actually win, I think I might have got one or two extra boats to show up just so that they can kick my butt. It's a late lunch, actually. Oh, nope, still frozen. Back away a little bit. Put it in your back pocket. I don't want to overcook it, you know? <laughs> There's that fine line between frozen and just slightly chilled. Mm, perfect. If you are uh, find yourself in need of sustenance while simultaneously finding yourself lacking in culinary skills, Uncrustables. You can't screw these up. Literally, you just take them out of the freezer, wait a little bit, and eat. It's a PB and J sandwich. That's right. I didn't grow up. So right now we're just trying to reorganize the trailer, which we never did the first time we went racing. I bought the boat. Joe LeCamp still owned the trailer, and uh, he wasn't sure if he was selling it to me. I wasn't sure if I was buying it. In between the last race and this race, actually about a week ago, I bought it from him. So it's still got a bunch of his stuff in here that doesn't go with the boat. So we decided to just clean it out, reorganize it, figure out where everything was because there's a bunch of stuff in here that we didn't even know we had, like extension cords and stuff we needed and we were about to go spend good money on. So we're almost to zero, which is good. We just and have then, a toolbox to sort out. Yeah, we need a ball. Save the worst for last. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> the, the toolbox is full of spare parts. So let's get, we'll take all the spare parts out put them in the cabinets and then put actual tools in there. Okay. Then we don't need a toolbox laying on the floor. Good. Just as soon as I finish lunch, dinner. What, we don't need a toolbox all the way to the floor? Maybe not. So the last time we went racing, there were some issues with the boat itself because it had sat for a few years, but then we started having motor issues. The first issue was it broke valve springs and uh, the valve springs were the only item not changed out on this big block Chevy the last time it was refreshed. And um, so that was a problem. And then we had a motor milkshake, which is water in the oil. And that was because the way the water system was plumbed, we had high pressure water coming from the jet drive, feeding the cooling system of the engine. There was no regulator. And um, they were using a ball valve on the line to cut down water flow. And the ball valve was almost wide open which you know, was just an oversight on somebody's part. And then the other thing that went wrong, you know, we had some wiring issues, but the big thing was we had way too much fuel pressure in the pit. And if the scoop was off, I'd show you, but we can cut to the clip, I think, of fuel coming out of the carb vent tubes into the Venturi's flooding the motor while it was idling. So we turned the regulator down and there was no gauge on the regulator. So we were using the data acquisition system of the boat to show us what the fuel pressure was. And we turned it down, I think, to eight pounds of fuel pressure. And as soon as we did that, boat wouldn't go down the track. Motor did not want to rev past idle. It was a disaster. And so after the fact, over the winter, 
you know, we fixed the valve springs, we fixed the intake gaskets, we replumbed the water system, we did all these things. But one of the things my friend Trevor from Big League Racing did was he rebuilt the fuel pressure regulator. And it's basically putting a new diaphragm inside of it. The diaphragm is spring loaded on top. And as the fuel goes underneath it, the diaphragm and the spring are there to dampen the pulses or damp the pulses, whatever you want to call it. But basically they set the fuel pressure. Well, the moment he put a new diaphragm in it and bolted the thing back together, the gauge showed we had three pounds of fuel pressure. Which means if we really did have three pounds of fuel pressure at the last race, that would explain why the motor didn't want to rev and the boat wouldn't go down the track on race day. I'm hoping that was the actual problem. We haven't run the boat since then because nobody's had time and everybody's got lives, but I have a good feeling that between all the replacements of parts and adding an alternator to the charging system, this boat is probably as good as we could make it given the time that we have and it should go down the racetrack, which would be awesome. So right now I'm gonna take the valve covers off and that'll give me access to the rocker arms, the valve springs, the push rods, that sort of thing. And then what I'm gonna be doing is inserting feeler gauge between the tip of the rocker and the tip of the valve. And I'm looking for clearance there, basically. You have to have clearance there so that the valve can shut all the way as the engine rotates. And this engine got refreshed by Mike Miller of Mike Miller Racing Engines. The base timing got set, the valve lash got set, the rockers have not been adjusted or checked since the motor got briefly fired up before it came here. Now we need to actually make sure it's all right because it would be a damn shame if one's just misadjusted and we went out there and just, you know, went for a rip. That would be bad. This camshaft has a lot of lift, has a lot of spring pressure. All these things need to be right to keep from, uh oh. Uh-oh. I don't think it's been around on water. It was. Did Trevor ran it on water? Trevor ran it on water. I saw a picture of it in the bucket. Let me get a, let me get a flashlight. Maybe it's just condensation. Hmm. Flashlight's no, no yeah, point. Well, that's a possibility because we were, uh, when he was doing all this, it was raining and stuff. So there was a lot of moisture in the air. Maybe it's just condensation. Let's go with that. I'm not gonna worry about it yet until it's an actual problem. Plus, we've proven we can go through a race weekend with water in the oil and it didn't even hurt the bearings. But there is some, a little bit of condensation, but maybe it never got hot enough to burn all that off. Yeah, look at the adjuster nuts, all are milkshaked. Yeah. Hmm. Or those didn't get cleaned enough, maybe, I don't know. Not gonna worry about that. It's not a problem yet. Well, it's supposed to be five, but I'm just gonna go over all of them and see. Because maybe he forgot what it was supposed to be. <laughs> this one should be 13 on the exhaust. I found the cam card. You there? Huh? Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Get a router so I get yeah. stronger signal out here. Oh, how about now? Oh, hi. Are you here to help? I hope so. <laughs> Don't you lick me. You're not helpful. All you do is shed on me. I mean, I appreciate the love, but you're not, you're really not very helpful. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm, I'm texting. This is very important. This is very, very important. All right. I, I'll make you a deal. I will pet you as long as you don't fart or lick my face. Because I know you. I know what you licked earlier. Oh, 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 oh no, we got a deal. We got a deal. Don't lick my face. Oh, there we go. There, if you fart, we're done. Our relationship is over. Over. I got no service. I got, oh, hey, hey, I'm still petting you. you. You stop. I got no service. I can't get a hold of the engine builder. There's a little bit of condensation in the motor. 
and the valve lash is looser than he told me it ought to be. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to get a hold of him. I'm not real concerned about it. But I'm trying to get a hold of him, but we're in the black hole of cell service, and I have a, I don't know, what, what are you, a miniature pit bull? What are you? Oh, you're just, just going to roll over and present yourself here? This dog farts a lot, and I'm, I've made it a deal. I will, I will scratch its belly if, as long as it doesn't fart on me or lick my face. Don't be demanding. You're, yeah, yes, you're a very important part of the team. Oh, hi. Oh, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I literally watched you lick something else a few minutes ago. All right. We're cool, but we're not that cool. This isn't much further off than he said it should have been, so I'm not okay. going to adjust it. I'll button this side, go to the other side. Okay. And... It's the whole front row are snowbirds here. They're either going to be really happy about the free entertainment or they're going to be mad about the noise. Because ideally, we'd be pit up, we'd pit on the front row facing the water, just have a good view of the show, but the snowbirds are here, so. We're back here in the back 40 in the dirt. And like I said, those snowboards are either going to be real stoked about the free drag boat racing show they're going to get, or they're not going to be happy about the noise. Hi, right, Corey. Yeah, I don't think we'll get a chance to, to run it this evening, which is okay. They have a whole day of testing tune here tomorrow. So Sometimes it's nice to show up already knowing it works. but I don't ever have that luxury. Your, considering your background. I mean, I would, I'm, I'm not against that. I, I would love that, actually. So just... Reset all the rockers, tightened up all the valve lash, everything's happy, we're now priming the motor. We've taken the belts off the dry sump, external oil pump, and Joe is spinning it with a power drill to prime the complete oil system. So we're getting oil to all the main bearings, rod bearings, all the tips of the push rods, cam bearings, everything's getting oil now. Then we'll fire it up and hear it for the first time since last season. Right there. Can't tell oh, it, should, it should drop right now. Huh? It should just drop. Yeah, it's like there's nothing in the tube, it looks like. Okay. And it's probably it a little in oil. Yeah, yeah. It must have dropped. Apparently it dropped. <laughs> it's about half tank. Okay. It's about the band here. Okay. Well, then it's going to be hard to see where it's at when it's running. Yeah. At worst case, let's just fire. just add a quart to it. Yeah. If we get real desperate. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Who's your, yeah, your high-dollar prank tool? Right, we'll <laughs> 15, 20, 40, 70. That's a hundred dollars worth of extension there. Right. And look, it's wobbly for you. It's built in. Well, it's a lot of people will buy those. A little bit of arch. Yeah, but that's what you need. Like if you got to get the bell housing bolts, you know, or like look at that. Look at that. And it's sturdy. It's, what I like about those ones Christmas is that's the one that one that's the one that's going to spin right <laughs> off of there and come down and sock you right in the chin. No, or in this the, this thing cares. I, this thing cares about or, me. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. It cares. Go ahead. Go Smoking. Alternator? Is it the belt too tight or is it the wire? Wire's not hot. Maybe it was the belt. Well, that's a little warm. The alternator's pretty warm though. Feel the alternator. Is it? Yeah. It shouldn't be that hot. Not especially for that much running. Boat sounds good. Motor sounds healthy. New alternator is smoking. It's a little weird, you know? And it's not smoking from the wiring. It looks like it's coming out of the case. So we might not have a charging system this weekend. But we've already proven we can get through at least two days of racing without a charging system. And if we keep the battery charger on the boat in between rounds, it'll probably be all right. But it would be great to have a charging system. Let's go through tech. Because the, the boat works and we're okay. out of time. Am I straight with it? You're in the general vicinity. Oh, you're doing great. You got about a foot and a half. Oh, is it way under the bed? Yeah. Keep going. You got about another eight inches. A little more. A little more. A little more. Bingo. Nailed it. It's an exact replica of my racing program. I'm like, dude, that's like the coolest steering wheel. Why are you rubbing it? And then I grab like, it over like, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to die. This is exactly like our racing program. It looks like a steering wheel. Right. Kind of operates like one, but it's ready to fall apart at any moment. <laughs> no, it's, it's, um. Are we in forward? Oh. 
<laughs> steering wheel is a mess. I'm gonna buy him a steering wheel. So we can go out to the road and just go straight down. This road? Got it. You got this. Oh, Do you need your paperwork? What paperwork? The registration stuff, or you don't need it? I don't know. No, this is just tech. Okay, stop. Hey, what's going on, buddy? Hey, how we doing? Good, man. You want to get? Uh, I know the sign says officially closed, but if you want to get tech, we'll get it done. Today. I would love. Oh, it's, we got ten minutes left. It's four fifty. What's that? It's four fifty. No, it's Arizona time. Oh, did my phone not switch? Oh. I was so proud of myself. I'm like, for once, I'm not late. <laughs> Nope. If we were on California side, it'd be perfect. Hour late. <laughs> we can float across the river. We have a paddle. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Like, if you were to paddle 100 yards that way, right. we wouldn't be late. No. So if we went boating, we wouldn't be late. But because we're on land, we're late with our drag boat for tech. Perfect. Did you got all new stuff. No, I that. went and got another one. Did you really? Yeah, the old one uh, is retired. We use it at the lake instead of coming out here with it. You don't have anything at the lake to use it anymore. What were you using the wakeboard boat? Why piece boat? Oh, that's right. Things fast. Yeah, but it's coming Good out here. Man, 2020. I mean, eventually, yeah, this summer. I'll bring it with me. This stuff will stay in this trailer. Do 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 do. Huh? Yeah, it's around there. Tech inspection. Can you uh, turn on the ignition for me. First switch. <laughs> Okay, I'll kill the air. Fire it up. Go ahead and fire it up and just pull the lanyard after you fire it. Beautiful. This, dude, this is so rad down here by the starting line with the pirate ship and the bar. Yeah. That's such a great cool. scene out and here, man. Cool it really is. It's when you get done making a pass, you can make a whole nother pass. Oh, right. dude. <laughs> can, two and a half gallons, can you get to Foxes from here? Well, not, not, not with this engine. Oh, Roadrunner. Damn. All right. Roadrunner's closed. I know, unfortunately. Oh. Well, maybe I can stop Just half, stop on my pit and Stop I'll halfway, top it off. yeah, and yeah. then we keep going. <laughs> it's always been a dream of mine to make a pass here and then get to Fox's. Just park the boat. Yeah. And be done. Well, we can do that tomorrow at the end of the day. Oh. We'll all line up at the same time. Let's do and it. We'll all go until I'm Absolutely down. love this. I'm down. All right, I'm in. I'm doing it. I'm down. Yeah, because the trailer jockey is. I got two seats, too, so. I can stop at the beach and pick someone up. So Fox's is a floating <laughs> bar on the Colorado River here on the Parker back. Strip. Like, legit. It, it's awesome. And, yeah, that's uh, the best bar on the Colorado River. It really is. Fox's, yeah. Good breakfast, too. Good tacos. Great breakfast. And it's just a couple miles upriver oh, from where we're man. racing. And it's always been a dream of mine to make a hit and then just bypass the out ramp and keep going until I got to the bar and just park the boat and right, lay there. So we're all going in at 4 p.m. tomorrow. I love this idea. And we're all going to meet at Fox's. Okay, just made it through tech inspection. We have one thing to address. We're missing a throttle return spring on our carburetor linkage. We have one on the gas pedal, and truth be told, this thing is oversprung. Like, it returns easy, but the, the rules say you have to have one on the linkage at the carburetor. So we're going to go back to the pit. I took it off earlier, forgot to put it back on, so we'll do that. And then we're done. We have all our safety gear. We're registered for the race. Tomorrow is test and tune. Feels like we're ready. You know, other than that little bit of smoke coming out of the alternator, I think we're good to go. Today is test and tune. It is about 65 degrees out and cloudy here. If you look at the trees and the American flags, they're all blowing this way, which is a bummer because it's blowing at you. It's blowing down track. Um, 
which means the water is going to be a little rough. This boat probably won't stay hooked up in rough water. Uh, but more than that, like the, I don't like the wind coming at me in a light boat like this because it's a recipe for doing that. Um, so this first pass, I don't even know I'll make the full trip. I'll probably just go 300 feet and just get out of it um, and then come back and pull valve cover, make sure there isn't water in the oil and uh, look at some other things, make sure everything's happy. So I'm ready to go play in the water. Let this thing to get out there and make a nice pass for us. Hopefully stay stuck to the water for a little bit in the choppy stuff out there. But um, yes, sir. I am waiting. I've been waiting for this for a long time. I have been bugging Finnegan to go racing for probably a good five, six years, ever since uh, uh, probably a year or so after he stopped. Actually, when he got game over done, I was like, okay, send it back out to California. Let's go racing. And then he sold it and I thought, you know what? That's it. About a week later, he's like, I bought another boat, but it's better than game over. I said, All right, let's go racing. And here we are. Hopefully we can go out and have a great weekend. Ready? Well, we're waiting in line right now for our first test pass. And there's a light breeze, which I'm concerned about. Gotta be honest. Definitely concerned about that. Especially since we've made some pretty big changes to this boat, not just to keep it from, you know, misfiring and not running down the track, but we actually moved the motor back a couple inches to put a little more weight on the back of the boat because I noticed when I drove it at Lake Ming during a wide open throttle run, if the water got a little ripply or if the boat was accelerating past seven or 800 feet, the jet drive would unload. It wasn't picking up water. So we were trying to put a little more weight in the back of the boat by moving the motor back. But that means we have less weight forward of the center of gravity. So, hey there. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't have my wallet. I didn't know you were charging, I'm sorry. Uh, he might have some money. All right, plugs out, scoop plugs out, blankets, we good. All right, boats and gear, let's do this. Hey, have fun. Yeah, buddy. Boat and always be a good time. Arr. I only said it like that because of where we're at. Don't judge me. What color is the buoy for 660? Second yellow buoy in the center. Once you pass the second yellow buoy in the center line, yep. Yep. you're past the 660 mark. Okay. Dude, this boat's like to tow you. That is crazy. It is the hardest accelerating boat I've ever driven. Yeah, most boats, I can't even hold on to one. Yeah. The water's rough and the lane is narrow. This is interesting. Wow, these are the narrowest lanes I've ever seen. And maybe it's an optical illusion, but it looks like the track is kind of going to the left. Well, let's we'll drive it till it feels not good and then I'll lift. All right, Mike, thumbs up when you're ready.
I was like, that's not Mike because he's going to shut off early. And then I'm like, oh, that is Mike. Dude, it felt killer. Like the water looked bad. And the wind was blowing the flag at me. So in my mind, I wasn't going the whole way. And then I was like, eh, well, it feels good. I'll just keep going. All right, so now we're going to go back to the pit and uh, plug the laptop in, see if the data box actually recorded any data. Even if we don't have the data, I don't care. The boat ran killer. This, thing's this thing is working again, finally. Look. Can we call my wife and tell her we didn't waste a lot of money. The boat works again. <laughs> All that money I spent over the winter, baby, worth it. Worth it. It, uh, yeah, yeah so like happy. this kind of water, this boat wouldn't have gone through before because it wouldn't do it at Ming. Right. And, um, and I know if you look on the data, it probably did unload a little bit. But it wasn't. It engine, sounded great. The engine RPM wasn't going wah wah wah. Yeah. Moving the motor back, it loved it. It absolutely loved it. On this, well, it's also a little different. I mean, you've got water coming at you. Yeah. You know, the current's flowing against you. So I forgot about that, right? I was on the starting line. I'm holding on to the rope. How did the How did it hold on the rope? Did it twist? It still twists. Um, okay, so we'll take one of those 90s off. Let's try that. Okay. So I was sitting there and I'm holding on the rope, and I'm like. Oh, it's a pop-off charge? I don't know. And I let go of the rope so I could look down. <laughs> and I had to take my feet off the pedals, twist around, look down. I see it's charged. I look up. I'm three feet from the rope. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. So then I stand up and I get the rope and I pull myself back forward. Well, when they tell me to go, you know, they say start the engine, watch the lights. Right. It won't start. And I'm like, what in the hell? And then I'm like, oh, I stood up. So the lander oh, for the, the kill switch. Popped off. Yeah, the kill switch cap popped off. You were just a train wreck he out was there. An absolute train wreck. <laughs> awesome. So by the time it was time to go, I don't know what kind of light I cut, but I was pretty well just like, well, I'm just gonna go now. Whatever, whenever that number was, I was just gonna go. Make, make no mistakes. Doing? It's not my goal in life to just show up places unprepared. Like, we try to be prepared. We really do. I mean, dude, were, we were pretty prepared. We're, we, I mean, we did a lot of work to get this thing done in a very short time. And we came here early so that when it was time to make a pass, the boat was as ready as it was gonna be. Yeah. You know? and we still didn't know if it was gonna work, but now that it does, You never know. On. I mean, you could build a brand new boat and think everything's freaking perfect and get out there and fall on your face. Yep. You know? Lord knows I've done that too. Yeah, we have. <laughs> We've you, done a lot of that stuff, dude. I thought for sure we were gonna launch the boat with the blanket still on the motor and the scoop plug in because oh, we, no. we've done that before. <laughs> I'm on this game. <laughs> You've done that before. I'm stoked. 411 to 660, which is like good for an NA boat. It's really good. Uh, 589 out the back door at 127. The mile an hour is low because it was unloading a little bit, but but we could slow it down for the quick eliminator class. And if we could find a little more ET in the whole shot, like if we could get the half track time to like a 405, we could take some people out of the 660 class, even though we don't have nitrous. Or so you want to uh, you want to take some out of it at the hit? And yeah. We're making a pass right now. Let's see what we do. Let's shorten the launch profile. Yeah. Uh, first thing I want to do let's though is get, um, I'm going to pull this off right now. Yes. All right. So test and tune pass number one was just resounding success. Not only did the boat make it from the starting line to the finish line, but it ran really good. It ran a 4.11 second pass to 660, which is good. That's the one class we're in, which is heads up. And then we ran a 589 to a thousand foot, which is pretty good for this boat. Um, and I think there's a little more ET sitting there in the whole shot that we can play with. But more than anything right now, the boat runs fine. We're going to pull a valve cover, make sure there's no water in the oil. And if there's no water in the oil, that means all the gremlins oh, no, in this, this motor is, this are fixed. It's not complete milkshake, but I can see moisture in here. All right? Okay. I'm not gonna put. I I'll leave it off right now. Take the other one off. Okay. Yeah. I just. I mean, I've got. I put the cover back on, but I'm just leaving the nuts off right now. All right, team. Later. That was Joe Cole. Might have a motor milkshake again. Here we go. 
Alright, so right now my friend Austin's about to go. He pit crewed for us last time we ran my boat. Now he gets to drive his own boat, which is a Cheyenne like mine. Shake or not. Dude, looks like my wife's suburban. Same color. Sweet truck. So I don't have a golf cart to go racing, but if I did, it'd be like that. Look at that. Temp upholstery. That's the Sun Classic. Man. Well, I know Austin's not stoked on that pass, but at least it went down the track. I may have bigger problems than Austin because Joe Cole called me and said, hey, there's some condensation under the valve covers again. Well, I really hope it's not a motor milkshake. Because we've already made the motor milkshake videos. Like, I don't know how many times you guys want to you know, continue us to see us making those. And I didn't bring 12 gallons of motor oil with me this time. Ooh, well, maybe. All right, so we're not running it again today. I need to go buy a lot of motor oil and try to find some intake gaskets and find a way to further restrict the water that's going to that motor because we got water and oil again. Damn. Still got a bog. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. 116, it ain't picking nothing up. Not quite as what we expected. We had a, still fighting a bog and we got some uh, fuel distribution issues. So we're playing with the jets to even out the cylinders and we're still got some pretty lean cylinders and the boat's not liking it. And we're also fighting a little bit of engine vacuum issues. Usually we have around 19 inches and we have two. So we gotta find out where the vacuum leak is also. It feels like old times. Look at all of us here together. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And my phone doesn't work. It really feels like old times. You might have <laughs> and we all came out of the woodworks. Dude, tell me. You're next. I'm next, I know. Hurry up. I've been on him for Wait. years. Wait, just because you don't want to be the only one spending money? Exactly. <laughs> and if I have to shut the water off of the motor to make it to the rest of the weekend, I will. And Lucas showed up with his flat top, so he's going to be making Philly cheesesteaks here in a minute. See? We're fine. I'm going to talk to my wife today, because he won't dial. What's I'm my summer? really not calling her now that uh, What's the boat's never again. Hello? Hey, it's Finnegan. Hey. My uh, my phone wouldn't dial at all. Um, yeah. I don't think the water inlet to the motor is restricted enough. Um, and the outlet, I don't think, got made big enough. Um, what about pulling the fitting out of the jet drive and putting a nitrous jet in it or something to restrict it? Um, we can do that. Um, I, I don't know what's easier to do. Um, I know you, I, I think, I think, I don't know if it's a quarter inch pipe plug or eighth inch pipe plug that you can 
They see you went inside the fitting through a, a plug in it, and then drill, and then just drill the plug, you know, to whatever size you want. Yeah, I've had it. I've had to do that before. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> How you doing? How are you? Are you are you coming up here tonight? I'll take that apart right now. Yes. Do you have any intake gaskets you can bring with you? My assumption is that's where the water is coming from, but I don't know. Um, we're thinking that we'll drill this, thread it, and put a pipe plug in it, and then re-drill the pipe plug to a smaller hole to. Uh, Re yep. restrict the water, the pressure going in. Yep. So that's where we'll start, I guess. Let's see what happens. We're still getting water in the oil. So we got a lot of things fixed, but that. Disconnect these two lines here, cap it here. So this is just coming out and dumping overboard. These two lines here, extend them and dump them by themselves overboard off the back. And if we get real desperate and can't find dash six hoses and fittings to extend these lines, we can just slide heater hose over it, hose clamp it, and run the hoses, lay them on the back, and it's the time to top to pop off. But then it has four places for water. All water yeah. exiting. Which will lower the pressure, for sure. Okay, so we have a motor milkshake happening again. We caught it pretty early, though. You know, we only made one pass, so it's not awful. But we do need to change all the oil, and we need to figure out a new way to lower the water pressure in the motor. So I think what we're going to do is replumb the water system to lower that, probably restrict the water from the jet drive going into it, change the oil, and we're not going to run the boat again today. But if we can fix it before tomorrow, that'll be good. Uh, you don't have a vacuum either. You don't have a vacuum. have 19 inches. We have two. One. All right, well, that wouldn't cause what you're doing. No, but it costs a lot of power loss. But no, nah, it, nah, it would be like 40 horsepower. It, it's not what you're going through. This thing, you whacked it and it fell on its Yeah, I know, right? I know. It's got some issues in it. I don't know why it's doing that. It didn't do that before on the other end. Oh, are we going to clean the air loops? Yes. How big are the jets in this thing? They're all over the place. I've got But, like, how, yeah. you know, how big are they? Uh, uh, there are some he wants over like 110. Okay. How many squares? I don't know. But I don't use squirters. So I'm on a two step. Yeah, but the squirter is still active. Like, oh, my throttle, my, my foot's uh, all the way through. Oh, and how long do you have the As soon as it hits 20, I start up on two step. We still got one up here in 14 and a half. Yeah, we got some down at 11. They're better than they were. There were some in 15. First pass, and it felt like it, well, it from the from the shore. Way. It looked like once it got going, it's still not picking up any power. That's the problem. Same RPM going over. Yeah, over. It's like it's got like 950 horsepower. That's what it's spinning. How many RPMs? 7250. Okay. Um, was it better at all? I didn't see the first pass right here. No, it, it did the same thing. So even though you... But cylinders are happier. And how, how big were the jet changes you made between the first pass and the second? So this is what Joey wanted me to do. He wanted plus two here, minus eight, plus 10, plus six, plus 12, because they're super lean, but I couldn't get that far, but we got closer in here. So I would have equated to, I think a 116 is what I had in there to begin with. Here's the numbers. So I was running 96 squared. 90, 96s? Yeah. Oh, that's too small for this part. Oh uh, yeah, it's uh, much bigger now. Wow. Well, maybe it wants even more. It might. We got it. So I need two male unions. I don't know if I have unions. Or if you don't have unions, I just need two dash six lines about. Yeah, we can do that too. So let's see. Five or six inches we'll long. Put anything that's not dash six away. Okay. So, okay. So we need these two and a tape measure so I can go measure how long the hose to be. And then we just need to make two hoses up. Okay, right, Caps, would you take those two to Austin? I'll cap this and then um, and just help Austin build the two hoses. Right before I bought this boat, I didn't know it, but the, the engine got hurt and um, the cylinder head had to get welded up and machined. And so it's possible there's a crack there somewhere and the water's coming in through the crack, which isn't something we're gonna fix this weekend. So what I'm gonna do is 
replumb it to relieve some of the water pressure. Change the oil in the motor, restrict some of the water that's going in it. And then I'm gonna go buy a bottle of K Seal and put it in our warm up bucket and cycle it through the motor because K Seal works really well for roadkill. So why not this? Threading the AN fitting that comes off of the pump that feeds water to the motor. And then we're gonna put an eighth inch pipe plug in it and drill it out and restrict the water flow going into the motor. And uh, hopefully that will help us with our water pressure issue. That's it. Okay, well. It's gonna have to work. I think it will. There we go. I guess and blow that out with the air hose right there. But blow it in the, towards the dirt. Yeah, right out there. Follow the black hose. Follow the white rabbit. Wait a minute. We didn't even thread this side. Look. You didn't even go that far? The thread here. Oh, so we're going to have to go from the other side then? Well, yeah, but I wanted to do it so that we we could thread into the stop, like halfway through that stop. It's not long enough. Uh, we could drill this. So the tap goes deeper. Yeah. yeah. So the tap will go down, and then then stop. Then we'll start the thread at the at the step. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's drill bits out there that are actually easy to figure out. Okay. If you'll notice, this is very precision. Yeah. Come <laughs> on, stand here for a minute. That's true. <laughs> Take your clothes off. We'll make more money. <laughs> Let's broaden our reach, right. you know, into other well, no, areas. Let me take my shoes off. We're going only for that. No, I'm taking, no, off, no, I'm shit, taking yeah. off my shoes. The shoe. <laughs> Just one? Just one. Swingle the toes. You got to spend a lot of money to get the other one. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, That's a premium account. Right, right. That's right, VIP we're, status, babe. We're laughing right now because we have a hope. We have a plan. Shell Adams, good friend of mine from way back in the day, and probably the fastest naturally aspirated boat on the property, I think has all the oil we got five gallons of oil here and so we're going to flush out our milkshake again and change the oil and then tomorrow qualify let's do it yeah good luck dude thanks, thank dude. you thanks buddy and I'll hopefully we again. don't end up next to his boat because <laughs> fast really fast yeah we're in trouble then <laughs> so there's an nhra guy who took an airstream like that mm -hmm. took all the pop rivets off the back hinged it his drag car's in the airstream. Oh, that's right. And the airstream's on bags, at least flat on the ground. <laughs> he has the greatest trailer ever. Hmm. That one's probably a, a close second, though. His boat fits in a 26. I didn't even know they made a 26. Me either. Problem with the 26, though, is when his boat's in that trailer, I bet the forks are real close to the cabinets. So there's no yeah. room for anything. Yeah. Well, he's got it nice and organized. Everything goes in its place in there. In my brain, I was like, ah, oh, we're going to sit down with the water tonight, watch some boats go by, hmm. drink some beers. I did not think we'd be fixing another milkshake motor tonight. Dude, in my brain, <laughs> we were doing at least two more passes today. I know. I, I was know. ready to go. And you're like, no, we'll check that later. Nope, you go down there. I'm pulling the valve cover, dude. When you called me, I was like, oh, this can't be good. <laughs> My phone hasn't worked here all weekend, and all of a sudden, I'm getting <laughs> right, a phone when I call you. you for the bad call. Yeah. There is our 4 it's so cool. 4 .0. Oh, you cut your hair, too. Oh, Whoa. Bro, I gotta look good, you know what I mean? Dude, I didn't recognize you. I don't want to get you thrown in jail. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks, so rad. A little bit. It's way better. It's way better now. They ran a 411 to half track and a 589. With no stutter, not just. Nah, no stutter. Right on. Yeah. Shell run. So we're we gonna. 398, I think. Pull the manifold off. I hope not. I don't know. I, well, I'm starting to think there's a crack and we'll put somewhere. Put it on with the right stuff. I, I'm wondering if there's a crack somewhere, because it milkshaked on the warm up bucket. Oh really? That sucks. Yeah. Cause so. Sequence of events is For sure, Lynn. Yeah, like a uh, sure it thing. got a uh, you know Miller fixed it, put intake gaskets That's in it. Aluminum block, right? Yeah, it went to Trevor's and Trevor fired it up and set the timing, 
And when it got here, I pulled the valve covers to lash the valves. It was already starting to milkshake. How milky is it? Is it like white white or just like a little bit? Oh. The water goes a long way, bro. It, um, so when I pulled the covers off last night, the tops of the rockers, the nuts, had milk on them. And I was like, mm, all right, but the oil. Nothing down like the, the valve cover bottom? No, nah, last night it was fine. But today, after the pass, it's all milky. Not as bad as when you guys were with me, because we made like four passes with it. Well, but, the good thing is, I brought my technician. The motor builder's coming. <laughs> but we don't. He, he's unreliable. We don't know what he's gonna get here. <laughs> he has to pass a casino to get to the dirt parking lot. <laughs> I wouldn't come here first to either. Is he gonna make it in that bucket? The hose will need a little tweaking because it doesn't swivel. Do you want to work the hose? That sounds weird. Or uh, work the drill. Yeah, pull the valve cover off. That's all on the head. Yeah, it's all up top, dude. And it just keeps getting worse. And that's only one pass. Oh, no, no it, it just keeps getting worse. Like, flip the valve cover That's over. how it was at Bakersfield, too. Like, yeah. the first pass, and that's it just kept going bad. Yeah. What's supposed to be coming out of here? Oil, pure oil. But we have a little bit of water mixed in with it. It's not that bad. You can't, you know, normally you call it milkshake, and it literally looks milky color. Um, but we caught it early. So we're just being safe and uh, changing it out. Hopefully with our water fix again, it's fixed. We hope. Gotta help. Unless there's a crack somewhere. You're good. That's, it's just blurping stuff out. Whatever's happening, it's on this side, Mike. I wiped that all out. It's full again? No, no, you can just see a little bit sitting down there. I've been trying to wipe oh, it out. Oh, 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 yeah. It keeps kind of just seeping out. I, I gave up when I got to the bottom. <laughs> Never right. Here, no. <laughs> That's how it goes. Hey, I'm glad you bought it, not That's me. Literally how it goes. There's not a better looking boat out there. No. I love uh -huh. this boat. 100%. I don't even love red, but it looks so sick. Yeah, yeah I don't care it's how not much. It's a lot though. You no, know what I mean? no. It's and the, the the it's the subtle. just the color of the red just pops. Yep. If I have to turn the water off to the motor to get through the weekend, we'll do that. track it's not gonna overheat you know no, no we're just not driving to foxes in it <laughs> that's a lot of water jb well in the credit Does card you remember that hat? <laughs> no <laughs> there it is right there i'm just looking hey, back here i saw that one i'm just looking back here get the JB well it's like a crib. it's like a pinhole dude right in the head see i was looking up here where it was all yeah dry. now it's down lower uh, at least we know why now, finally. Right. After all this time. 100%, you know? dude. We know it's not. We know it's not intake. I think that's it over there, dude. Yeah. That's pretty good. And like I yeah, said, that's the side that, that was good. Yeah. We have finally found. I'm gonna ask him. Well, I know. I where all the water's JD coming well, from. Really like the, this uh, cylinder cast, head. This is an 11 degree dark big chief cylinder head. Yeah. Just caution. Um, you know what I think? This cylinder here. Look right there. The casting's porous, or there's a crack, one or the other. But the head is leaking right here under the valve cover, and water is just streaming in. 
And so, um, Shell Adams, the guy who I borrowed borrow the oil from, actually showed me a video of somebody else in Silverhead, same kind I have, with the same problem. And so, we hooked the warm-up bucket to it with the valve covers off, turned the water pump on, and now we can see water coming into my cylinder head. And uh, little JB, well, I think we're in good shape. I'm not how old. I'm celebrating. Uh, My hands are cracked. Let's, uh, I'm celebrating. Uh, least, sounds weird, Mike. But at least we know why there's water coming into the oil. What if we uh, clean it all up, we put the JB weld to it, and we make some sort of like vacuum on it to like suck it in a little bit? Suck on the right? exhaust like side. Like a uh, shop vac. Put a shot back to it. That's why. Like, that's what I was thinking. Make shot some uh, <laughs> shot back. Yes. No, make some like negative pressure. Might draw it in the crack a little bit. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> All right, science. Who's got a vacuum science. tool? <laughs> the heavy stuff. That's why I have. That's the good here. stuff. That's why I have safety glass. <laughs> can I get like a vacuum thing going over so I can inhale? And I feel like this whole tent is about to become a hot box because I'm, I'm going to be thorough about this. All right, well, so I'll make sure. I mean, let's just get it. It's going to be what it is. Yeah, okay. yeah it's going to be good. We're going to clean the aluminum, then we're going to JB weld the aluminum, and then it's not going to leak anymore, and we're going to go race. As soon as we find someone to pull some vacuum on the motor. <laughs> yeah, it's that. Yeah. So earlier I told you guys this whole series of videos is sponsored by Wire Care. They're my homies. If you got to wire something, plumb something, heat shriek something, they have everything you need. They also sell killer tools like this heat gun. This is from Steinel. Normally you'd be using this to do heat shrink tubing to protect your wires. We're going to use it to heat up our cylinder head casting. Get whatever stuff What's is stuck so in the poorest part of the casting. We're going to get it all hot, draw it to the surface, wipe it off. Spray clean it, and then we're gonna do JB well. This JB is the greatest fixed. tool. You can adjust the temperature of your heat gun. Oh, he's digital. Look I'm up that. to 500. Yeah, you could bake a pizza with that, bro. This will draw all the impurities out of this. Right. Anything dirty will pull it. Shout out to Wirecraft. Right on. Mm. I like this. We're up to 780 right now. This has got a great name. Steinel. I don't have Steinel. to worry about melting anything, here, right? No, you're not melting it. That head's already messed up. You're not melting it. No, no, no. I understand, but like, I don't want worry about any valves. I don't want to mess up any seats. Open up this present. Mike. What are you, what are you trying to achieve? No, just... Hey, buddy. What's this for? Oh, don't look. Don't look. It says don't look. Well, no, you have to look. But it says don't look. I think it's hot. But you have to look. Hey, I think it's hot. Look. Oh. No. Oh. Yeah, dad. That right there is how you fix a ten thousand dollar set of cylinder heads. <laughs> really right there. There you go. I think it's hot. Oh, oh. Okay. Hey, dude, I don't have gloves on. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to do this? Is that hot enough? Let me yeah. see. Let me try it. Put your tongue on it. Dude, it's you're steaming. Just, you're just cooking. It's hot. It's trying to get some of the oil out of there. All right. Instructions. Should we break it? Yeah, but you, we need some like, zips in a piece of cardboard. It's cardboard. a precision operation right there. This is JB Weld. It's two part epoxy. It works on metal, plastic, all kinds of stuff. It also works in high temperature environments. This is special JB Weld, though. This is what you do when you sunk 10 grand into a set of custom ported cylinder heads. This is how you, so you make them work. Wait till Miller gets here and we told him to fix the motor. <laughs> we JB welded the motor, you mean? Don't worry, Miller. It's fixed. It's dialed. Andy with the top secret uh, <laughs> secret sauce here. The key was the mix job, you know? No, it was uh, his small hands. Yeah. <laughs> smells like cabbage. It smells like cabbage. Yeah, well, no, it's, it it's kind of flowing out kind of nice right now. It's got like a probably a sixteenth of an inch layer on it right now. I'm guessing. Can we get someone to suck on the <laughs> on the cooling system? Andy, we need a vacuum on the cooling system. Jason, <laughs> <laughs> cut! I quit. Come on, twenty bucks is twenty bucks, bro. <laughs> Do you guys have a shop back? All right, let's let's test our machine. Oh my god! Yeah, we got yeah. suction. All right. Now, who's gonna? Okay, yeah. you do this. I'm gonna watch and see if that actually pulls in. Ready? Go ahead. This is about as redneck as it gets. I think. Uh, I think I'm about. I think I'm about there, boys. Have you sucked enough? That quick? 
All right, we're good. Oh. Look at it. It finished. Primed it. Anything else I can help you guys with? All right, here's your machine. I got 20 bucks. Want to take a walk? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not for 20 bucks. $20 is $20, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Not to keep pimping wire care, but they did pay for this whole trip and we're actually using their stuff. This is a dragon oh, no. blanket. It's a welding this. blanket. Yeah. Like if you're cutting, this. grinding, welding, whatever. Dude. So right now we're throwing it on top of the headers. <laughs> we're going to put a space heater here and heat up the cylinder head casting and heat up oh, our uh, JB weld to make sure our repair is 100%. Oh, I don't know. Or a gorilla tape for the way. Dude, that's a hack right there. <laughs> Next level. Ooh, it looks like it's good. It's oh, on. It's You've got a light. It's yeah. A micro See? Safety glasses. You needed them. The glasses fixed it. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm saying we go straight to the racing. But we need to jump here. Okay, uh, what is it, Saturday? Qualifying day? I'm guessing we're 30 or 40 minutes away from other people driving their boats down the racetrack. We're still working on ours, and the full crew is here. Andy Rawls is in the house, this is the dude that built the boat. He's now driving his Pro 2 daily driver off-road truck. I believe that's our tow rig today. That's right. Solid. Uh, Randy Joyce is here, he's in charge of whatever you do. Whatever I do. Everything, music, Everything. music, beer, making parts, make sure parts don't fall off. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be a couple hours before we go, but I'm pretty sure the JB Weld fixed the cylinder heads, so we're good. 100%. I feel good. You look good. Ah, that's all that really matters, right? Mm. We're gonna go pre-run the uh, in-ramp.
five hours both ways. Well, with the truck, racing the truck, we're our local track in Verona, and that's, you know, 25 minutes from my shop. So what's, what's really cool about that is uh, all my family can come and watch, you know, all my friends. Just got a way bigger group at the car racing. I'm gonna suit up and let you guys do this because we're late. Yeah, go ahead. We're right on time. We're late. Yeah, we're, for us, we're right on time. Yeah, they just called Mike's class up, our, our first class, anyways, which is the 660 Grudge Race. So it's as fast as you can go um, to 660 feet. So it's half track, basically, a little more than half track. Um, and as usual, we were somewhere else when they called us, and now we're in a rush to warm the boat again and get up to the line. All right. It's uh, Saturday, time for our first qualifying pass. This will be in the 660 heads up class, which is eighth mile, go as quick as you possibly can. I'm hoping for a bottom four. I'd be towed to the in-ramp by a Pro 2 truck with chrome naked lady mud flaps. So uh, just check that off the bucket list right now. <laughs>
headwind. Water looks good though. A lot of boats in front of me right now. We'll be waiting here a few minutes. So the countdown clock here is different than NGBA. When the ambers flash, that length of time is shorter. And then this counts down from 20 instead of 10. was fun. God, this thing leaves hard. This thing is an absolute animal during the whole shot. And pretty good everywhere else too. Hey, what it run? 408. Yeah! Woo! Dude, that's the best it's ever done. Trevor, let's turn it up some more. <laughs> yeah, right. it, it liked it. It was a rocket out of the hole. It Great. loved it. Shell did a 395 though. Dude, that's the best lick I've ever made in this boat. I turned, I raised the rev limiter up out of the hole, 400 RPM, and I was worried, you know, maybe it'll cavitate and it won't like it. No, it loved it. This thing was like being shot out of a cannon. And we just picked up uh, three hundredths of a second, which doesn't sound like much, but for me it is. It just ran a 408 to the 660. That guy over there, Shell Adams, good friend of mine, ran a 395. That thing, you gotta check that boat out. That thing turns like 10,000 RPM, it's an animal. Dude, we were in a 408. We were so close to a three. 408, I mean, that's not close to a three, but that is, you know, it's close enough where we're gonna keep trying to run a three. <laughs> All right, so they've already called us for our next class. And that class we need to slow down for because that's the six second thousand foot bracket. So longer course, we just went 660 feet in 4.08 seconds. We now need to slow down to cover 1,000 feet in 6.00 seconds, because on that pass, we went 587 in 1,000 feet. Like, too fast. <laughs> Good problem to have. Never forget, this boat has no nitrous, no turbos, no blower. This thing's doing what most boaters can't do unless they have a power adder. 
It looks a little bit heavy in the ass going down the track. Okay. So I think what we could do, what I would like to do is flatten out the ride plate just a touch, go up about a quarter degrees on the nozzle and put the wing up to the next location. Let's do it. Yeah. I'll put stutter in it anyway. Well, no. well, that's not going to tell us what we need. Other than I can see the ride down track. Because it's got good attitude down track. I don't want it any higher in the nose. Yeah. It's a, it looks like the tail's dragging a little bit. I think if we bring the nozzle up, I think we can build some lift, flatten out the ride plate a little bit to create some tail lift. Let, let's do that because we already know how to run QE. So I don't care if I throw away a QE run. So I just don't know how many laps you're going to get today. If we if we slow it down now and then come back for your next uh, 660 deal, I just don't know how much time we're going to have. Uh, we may not get another one. Okay, well, let's just slow down this one, and if we get another shot at 60, then we'll throw the toolbox at it. Okay, but uh, let's still look at the launch profile stuff because I think I think that could be better. Okay, and that's not going to affect anything else really. Do we know if we have any data? Whatsoever? We have data, yeah. Okay, we'll look at that. I'm going to look at that in the profile. Okay. And uh, we'll just make, possibly, we may, we may, we won't, but we'll look at the data and see. We may make a profile change. I'll plug into it right now, and uh, and we will, uh, I would love to gain some more, because, I mean, if we run a 399, that'd be rad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a tenth is yeah. going to be a tall order, it's, but. It's eight and a half hundredths. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say that's a long way from a tenth. Again. Mikey, again. Mike, we good. Yay, we good, baby. Weld. I'm a happy boy right JB now. JB Weld, Craig and PB. Thanks, that was the top secret, JB Weld. Dude, that's yeah. like the good stuff. Right hey, there. dude, Operation Proto. Dude, this is so dude. All the way, I'm like, I can't believe this. This is amazing. <laughs> Everyone you drove past was just like, Every what single the person hell? loves it, man. Loves it. That's what's oh, up. Dude. We got a race car, boys. Yeah. I pulled the valve cover to check and make sure we didn't get any more water at all, uh, or even if we got a little bit. And uh, it looks like our fix last night. Thank you, JB Weld. Get at Mike if you want to sponsor him. Uh, our JB Weld fix last night. We have no water in the oil. We're looking good. We're ready to go racing. We're going to have a fun weekend now. We're not chasing problems now, we're chasing time. That's right. <laughs> Uh, so right now, Mike Miller, who built the engine and who's a really, really fast jet boat racer, is plugging into our data system, which for some reason this weekend's working. Didn't work the last time. Now it works. And so he's looking at uh, pressures inside the jet drive, oil pressure, fuel pressure, all the things to make sure it's happy and to see, can we go faster? All right, Andy. This is my first qualifying pass in the quick eliminator class. That's a thousand foot course, so I'm going to be going further than I have. And uh, the goal is to get from the starting line to the finish line in exactly six seconds. This boat is normally too fast. Six seconds is the index.
with an eight on a six second index, he's going to be very happy with that run. Dude, six oh oh eight. Oh six six oh eight. Oh eight. Oh eight. But yeah. still, good. Like, dude, fine. We know how to go slow. You just gotta go. You still work the tree now. Yeah. Slower at the tree now. Yeah. Nice light. Yeah. How bad was the light? It doesn't have a number. <laughs> it says Y L P. Oh, it was probably perfect then. They don't know. Or L Y P. Left or L B Y. Their equipment like, is it's malfunctioning. It's left. It's left clearly. before yellow. Now let's kick it in the ass. So and do go we faster. get two more passes? <laughs> if they have time. Okay. We should. We should. Totally should. Nice light, buddy. What did I tell you? What did I say? 604? I saw a squirrel, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was out there having a good old time. I was like, all right, go. Uh, I, that's me. That's definitely what me. What did I say? 604? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll call that good. So right now, um, I'm going to adjust the angle of the ride plate on the bottom of the boat. And um, I obviously can't watch the boat going down the track, but Mike Miller can, and he knows what he's looking at, and he thinks the boat could go faster with some simple tweaking to the hardware under the bottom of the boat, so that's what we're gonna do. I know we just told you, hey, we just slowed down for one class, but I'm trying to go faster in the other one, so. Mike, uh, which one should I put in there? That's the thinnest one. Thinnest one? Actually, yeah, the thinnest one, or, or actually, is what else is in there? Uh, Same like thing. It's a quarter and whatever that is. Is that eighth? Yeah. Quarter and an eighth, and then yeah. we have three sixteenths and an eighth. You just add that one. Okay. So by adding this, it's going to push the plate down. And uh, may not make the boat drag the butt in the water as much as it's doing. So yeah, we are. Uh, we're, we're going to rotate the shims between the bowl and the nozzle. Uh, and that will like changes the, the angle of the chingus back here on the end of it. And hopefully it lets it free up the boat a little more. Going up a half a degree on the nozzle. Oh, that's what it is. It's not a chingus, it's a nozzle. Am I seeing the end of it? There it is. Huh? Before you totally undo it, let's see where it is. So tighten it up, T tighten more of them up because this was four degrees before and now it says three. All, all you do is, is two on the top, two, two on the side. Two on the bottom, no, not on the sides. Just do in, on both sides of the bank. If it has a center, do a the center centers. one there. Just this one uh -huh. and one on top, just tighten it down. That's, That's what all. I did. Okay. They're both tight. Oh, uh, you know what? It could be where I measured it from where you it's measured it. You want me so, to, I'll re-zero it. Well, no, I mean, we know where we're at, so it's three, three. That's where it says right now. Yeah. Three four, three three. You go three four, okay. three three. Yeah. Yeah. So make it three zero. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So we'll loosen it up now. Okay. I'll leave this the way it is. All right. Careful of the of the airlines. Here, I'll hold it. it. I'll hold it while you guys manipulate it. Got it. Both of them. Yeah, the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got you. So this one that way, this one this way? Yep. Sure. Got you. First. You can get them apart. Hey, how's our side thrust? Still a little, uh, still a little rotation. Take that other cap off. Right? One off and close this what if we one? open the big one and take off, yep. put the little one on? One. Yeah, I can do that. Just open the big one and call it good. Until it goes the other direction. Never know until you try. I like big changes. All right, I'm just hoping to be good. How bad could it get? So Round two qualifying, we're about to do the heads up class again. So we're trying to go faster. Yeah, we're, we're trying to free the boat up and get it higher up out of the water. Because we're naturally aspirated. We can't spray more nitrous. We can't, you know, we have a supercharger. We can't speed that up. We don't need turbos. All we can do is try to make the, the, the boat more efficient. The gasket in here, though. I want to check the angle first before we do all that. Two and a half. You're there, dude. Two and a half. You're there. 2.6. That's a half a degree. Yeah, that'll work. 
All right. Now we put gaskets in it. Let's see. We just ran our bracket pass, came back to the pit, made some pretty significant changes to the boat. We have raised the nozzle angle up on the jet drive. We've lowered the ride plate on the bottom of the hull. We've raised the wing up on the front of the boat. And uh, I'm going to do my best to only go an eighth of a mile this time. Although, to be honest, I'm not sure which buoy is the eighth mile buoy. So Second yellow, Mike. Second yellow. That's what he says. Second yellow. I trust him. better but we're still struggling still got a little bit of a bog but it's not going to die now um, still needs more fuel on the hit but now we're gonna start taking away fuel on the top end and hopefully we'll start picking up some more power you guys were out here late last night working on it right yes yeah pulling oil pumps apart vacuum pumps apart come to the conclusion that vacuum pump is junk and needs rebuilt so that's that's hindering us a bit too Around at 672, and this boat should be running 590s. <laughs> Shows how far we off on the motor tune right now. Just can't figure it out. But it went red, so it's leaving harder. That's good. Well, how's it going today? Good. How you doing? I'm having fun. No more water. No more water. Awesome. Yeah. So just that one spot, and that was it. Yep. Cool. So yep. It's totally bone dry now. Yeah, we are good to go. That's got to feel good. Oh, man. One less thing to think about. Yeah. I really didn't want to end the weekend having to take the motor apart again. No. No. No chance. What'd you run last time? Uh, 95. Nice. I don't know. I'm trying to flip-flop lanes because I've only run, let's see. Yeah, yesterday I ran here, and then today I ran there. Any differences, you think? Um, I'll know in a minute. Oh, that's right. But, you know, we'll, uh, the air has gone away a lot. Yesterday, the air was really good. Yeah. I think it was like 400 feet at like 4 p.m. Wow. Yeah. Cloud cover was good. Okay. Because uh, 200 feet before you got to the, it's, it was climbing and bang, banging the limiter and. Climbing. Yeah, it uh, it was on one. I was like, yeah, and then all of a sudden I felt it go up. I'm like, uh oh, and then it just hopped. Yeah. And on the second hop, just, I was like, nope. I mean, it just drove out of the water. Okay. All right. That's why I wanted to make sure you weren't going past 660. Wanted to see what this. I'm surprised that it that it won't take that because I I ran less nozzle down than that in my boat. Mm. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Stop moving. Thank you. So, put the nozzle back where it was. We'll leave the wing where it's at. Uh, we'll put the uh, the stutter profile back in it. Okay. It, it looked like it left pretty decent. Oh, yeah, I. Like 300 feet. Yeah, like. No, I mean, the, I mean, from the rope, it yeah. looked like the. The, the yeah, it, good. it leaves good to me. Um, <laughs> and so, and for the first few hundred feet, I was like, yeah. <laughs> it looked great for 300 feet, then it started hopping. Yeah. Anyone got a time slip? Uh, yeah, that was Randy. that was a five when I left. Anyone know what the light was? It was, it was red. red. Go four. It was red? Yeah, I left on a five, dude. Wow. That's how, that's how, they, that's how short their, their approach is. Yeah. The run is so short up there. It's crazy. When I was sitting there, I was like, 
This doesn't look like 125. Yeah, I mean, you you should be leaving on closer to a six. Right. Six going out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, in my gray boat, I would leave on the six as soon as it came up. Yeah. I would leave on a six. This is similar weight. You should be leaving on that. You should not be red lighting on a five. Okay. That's, if, if it was truly 125 feet, you wouldn't be. It looks like it's seven it's short. Feet. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty close. I was, I was early. Yeah. But you, let's see a number, though. <laughs> yeah, this time. I wasn't so early, they actually counted it. Just leave later. Oh, they gave me a... Oh, they gave me a thousand foot time. We have a thousand foot tune up. They went a 606 at 115. But you wow. let up before that. I did. They ran a 415 to 660, which I was out before the 660, I think, because it was scary. Because you know what it is? It's it's probably 20 yards past that second buoy. Oh, well, and it was scary. Like it was. Oh, really? start, oh, it started climbing, and I was like, uh oh, uh oh, and then I hopped once. So I was like, nope. And I hit the button. I got out of the gas. Randy. <laughs> so is this? Uh, there. There's a there. pair of red channel locks in there. Oh, uh, yeah. You're gonna this need is, those. This you is the keel. You can see the front fuel. of the boat came out of the water. Uh, it the, takes came up and exposed the, the front of the keel. Of broke oh, the back yeah. of the keel. Yeah. And fill the, okay. fill the pink drive. This is the intake low. And as soon as that starts happening, huh? just no water. We're going to take the stutter out of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We ran an 08. I don't even know what the air was when we did it, but it's hotter. Well, the air's still good, though. I, yeah, just shorten it. I'm going to take 500 out. Let's do that. Park it on double O and we'll drink beer. Yeah, no pressure though. Uh, it was a little, a little sketchy. Got my attention. Um, it left the line really, really good. And for the first two, three hundred feet, it was trucking. And I was like, oh, we are on one. And then all of a sudden, I just felt the boat start galloping. And uh, and then it just kept getting more violent. And right before the finish line at 660, I opened the pop off on the jet drive and got out of the throttle because I just felt like I was going to crash, you know. Um, so I ran a 415, which is not horrible, but uh, we're gonna undo the nozzle angle change we just made because the boat probably didn't like it. it uh, you know, the boat's just trying to climb out of the water now. So we'll go back to where we were on that deal and then turn our stutter back on because the next pass we make is qualifying for the bracket race. So we need to slow down. They uh, called 660 again, so I had to change the box because we had the QE stutter in it. We got any idea what number uh, qualifier we are? I have no idea. I don't even know how many boats are there. I'm going to guess it's Shell and us and everyone else maybe. crack at the 660 shootout um the boat still tried to climb out of the water so i dumped it we ran a 415 which wasn't great but uh now we have one more chance in quick eliminator which is the six second bracket so we're gonna try to slow the boat down right now and then uh you know become number one qualifier and then drink beer Woo! Right. so i 
I had a green light on that last pass, which is good. I'm kind of in between numbers. If I leave on a six, I'm way too early and I red light. If I leave on a five, I'm pretty late. So that was like, I saw a six, I literally said the word wait and then I went. And uh, so I think I flipped it in drive and mashed the gas somewhere between whoa and then eight. That was like a point one something light, which isn't great, but you know, at least it's not red. I'd rather be green on race day than red on race day and lose the race before it ever starts. really cool you can hear people in the bar cheering for their favorite drivers right now and there's a pirate ship to my right like 20 yards away it's incredible Might have made a second pass there. <laughs> oh god, that's fun. I love driving this boat. This boat is amazing. Dude, I was like, uh-oh, that guy's trying to go down the racetrack. Let me just like play chicken with him and see if he'll turn around. Yeah, right. <laughs> it worked, he got the message. He was cool. Ah. Dude, oh three. Right? You were, you were right about the tune-up, dude. 100 percent That thing Pure was luck. trucking. Dude, it looks so so good and it left the line like literally like the boat just went straight you want to hear something i made two passes so at the other end too at the, at the <laughs> other end right i'm i'm coasting 
I can see Andy with the truck and the trailer in the water, and I look up, there's a fishing boat coming down the course, and I was like, oh God, he's heading for the starting line. So I armed the pop off again and just legged one directly at him. Play chicken, he turned around. <laughs> And uh, I came off playing. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, it's all good. Just, you know, go that way. Go that way. And he turned right around and went up river, dude. It was wild. <laughs> yeah. And the old hardware, that's what it wants, dude. It loves it. That wing, that ride plate setting, that nozzle setting. I didn't see. Where's it? Where's our time set? Did you get it? Right. Dude, we ran a 603. Yeah. It's really, it's funny, it looks, dude. It, it so really likes it right now. Have you it's looked at it under the valve cover? No, that's that's really the only thing I'm left. I'm not worried about that I almost think we go I can look. tell you right now because... It's fine. No, we're going to run the valves. It won't change what I do tomorrow, that's for sure. It's fine. <laughs> we're going to run the valves. Just don't look. Right Let's run so, the valves. Yeah, well, Mike doesn't want He wants something to cool a little bit more in the yeah. room. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to get it How could I not feel great? The number I called out to Finian this morning, we ran in the final session, which puts us, don't really know, but it's got to be in a good spot. We ran 603 and a 60 dial in, so, yeah, we're money. If I pull these valve covers and everything looks good like it did this morning, I'll be even more happy. So. You'll sleep better then. What? You'll sleep better. Oh yeah. I was I was a little sketchy last night after, You're after always a before sketchy. I put the valve cover on it, and I was like, eh, it's crusty on top, but it's still soft on the bottom. Today was incredible. Um, we ran a 408 to 660 in the Grudge class, which is amazing, quickest this boat's ever gone that I've while I've owned it. Uh, we ran a 603 in Quick Eliminator, which is a six second index. So qualified really well there. But most importantly, up until now, because I haven't pulled a valve cover today, I don't think there's any water in the oil, which is amazing because I gotta be honest, I'm lactose intolerant. Like milkshakes don't work for me. So I'm glad they're done. This is six going out. This is seeing five. Yeah. When you're up there, and you're watching the lights. I mean, what's what, what's your procedure? Uh, well, I start counting. I mean, when I'm at NJBA, I'm counting from ten. I'm going ten, nine, eight, six. Wait, go. And I say the word wait. And, and how far I get through the word wait is when I go. Here, I'm going ten, nine, eight, seven, six, go. And it's just this little between six and five. I'm like, I'm in no man's land right here. Because if I because what I can do at the beginning of six, I'm early. I'm I'm red. What I can do is, we can hold it on the first dot. Okay. So if you want to see nine, eight, seven, six, and go, right. we can hold it and slow it down so it doesn't, so the motor doesn't accelerate. You just step on it and it's on more of a two step right. to start with than a launch profile. That tweaks the ET just a little bit though, right? Yeah. A little bit, not much. Yeah, but okay. for bracket racing and you're slowing yourself down anyways, yeah. that doesn't matter. That's true. So That's true. if you want it, it's something that we can try. It's up to you whether you want to just try to mentally do it or I can put some delay in the profile so you can see six and go. Yeah. Give me one shot in the morning in one class and if I can't do it, then we'll try the computer.
It's race day. I was mentally fully prepared to get in the boat and race somebody, but they just said they're going to have an hour of testing tune, which is great because I really need to work on my light, on my reaction time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, finally, it is race day here in Parker, Arizona on the beautiful Colorado River. The 2023 season for the Arizona Track Boat Association is underway, and we could not be more excited. We brought almost 100 boats with us on the property. Friday was all about test and tune, giving everybody an opportunity to make sure they've got those boats dialed in the way they want them. And then Saturday, we brought them out, let them unqualify. The brackets are done, and today, today is all about eliminations. We're going to see who's got what it takes to get to the end and we're going to send the rest of them home but most importantly we're going to put on a great show and we're going to have a whole lot of fun killer. Hopped a couple times on the big end right before the finish line, but nothing that was really dangerous. Um, might have gone red a little bit, otherwise, I don't know. I felt like I cut a decent light. Boat did a little bit of a burnout at the beginning. That'll affect it. That was a 607, buddy. It's a great little test hit for the morning to get us set up for uh, our race day. This will be a good day. I am excited. Mike's got the tree dialed down finally. No more red lights. We're good. Ready to go racing. Yay. Tell me. What do you want to know? Uh, all of the it. light. Well, tell me the light first. One seven. All right. Yeah. Green. Green's good. Green. Yes, on the green side. Six oh seven. Well, all right. One twenty nine. Six oh seven. One twenty nine. It was booking though. But yeah, we're like, he's like, oh, this is this is six oh. No, this is gonna be six sixty. I'm like, no, this is a six oh. Don't tell me it's a 660. Because <laughs> you, you hammered it and all of a sudden I hear it go, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. I'm like, wait, did he change something and didn't tell me? No, that's testing tune, so I was trying to get a style for the bracket. Right, that's yeah. what I figured. So this is going to be cool. It's round one of eliminations. I'm in a bracket racing class, which we qualified for with a 603. Everyone else in that class is going to get paired up with each other on a ladder, which is how you normally go drag racing. But I'm in a heads up grudge class for an eighth of a mile. That class, there's no ladder for. We're just going to draw chips out of a bag, and whoever's number matches, that's who you're racing. And we're going to do that every round. And I believe there's six or seven boats in that class. Drivers are all standing here. We're waiting for the guy to get here with a chip bag, and then we're going to get after it. My money's on shelves. Actually, I think I'm going to do it on Bob. Bob, I'm Bob. Bob. Dude, so here's the thing. Bob is either going to light the world on fire or himself. Yeah. That's what's yeah. Going to He's going to light something on yeah. fire. <laughs> Little pulleys on it, I'm yeah. guessing, right? Your best ET. Uh, 408. What about you? 395. Nice. You're but supposed to be here setting records, Bob. That's your job. <laughs> Without blowing them up, though. Scooping the sky or setting records? Yeah. One or the other. It's been to the trailer four times by itself. I'm on a record right there. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> oh. So you win a 395, you win a 395? 390. 390, what'd you do? The, the carbureted boat. Dang. Cool. I, I don't want any of you in we round are, one. Hey, <laughs> we are so out of our league right now. I want right no one in round one. <laughs> I'm on a hydro though. That's gotta be like an eight. I still don't want you. <laughs> Mike, Trey. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Yes, Number. Number three, two, two. Who's got a two? <laughs> Dang. Cool. All right, boys. Good luck. Do it. Have fun. Be safe. Sleep in the light. Good luck, guys. Yeah. Good luck, guys. Lord knows I can't. 
All right, so we had a six boat field, but a couple of boats broke. We're down to four. Everybody drew chips. I have drawn Bob Fry, another jet boat. He qualified with like a 395 or something. Like I'm, I'm about a tenth slower than him. So I need to somehow figure out how to cut a light to try to beat him. Yeah, man, let's do this. <laughs> I just heard my announcer card. I can't believe he just said Bob's cheap cars and VCRs. Uh, it doesn't exist. I just like the way it sounds. That's the first round of drag boat racing I've won in I don't even know when the last time was. And uh, it was wild. I, I, was, I was pretty calm. I was ready to go. And all of a sudden they tell us to start their motors and Bob Fry, out of my left eye, I can see him go right under the holding rope. And then he's in no man's land between the beams and the rope and he's just sitting there. And I'm like, okay, well, he's a really good driver. He knows what to do. He'll compensate. He'll still cut a light and go. I saw my number just left. I was out. And uh, I don't know what happened to him. I don't even know if he ever went down the track. I just heard his blower fell off or something. I he broke the beam, so a good thing you didn't go red. He did coast past the beam. Oh, well, once he, once he hey, went out there, Bobby I'm like, just did I'm Bobby. not going red. Bobby just did Bobby. It went, bah! They said the blower pulley <laughs> fell off of it. Huh? They said the blower pulley fell off the front of it. Hey, what do we run? 416. Shell beat the hydro, so it's us and Shell? Yeah. So what we're talking about right now, in terms of the tune-up, we're not really touching the engine per se. Like we're not adjusting the carburetors. We're not adjusting the ignition timing. We're giving it everything it's got every lap. And then what we're doing is using the MSD Digital 7 ignition box to turn on a rev limiter to slow the boat down. So the boat goes out about three seconds into the run, get, gets past the Christmas tree, and then we drop the engine RPM, 500 RPM, for a specific length of time. That slows the boat down, then we let it go again and uncork it, and it speeds up. And based on that, I can predict how quick the boat's gonna go. If I don't put any stutter in there, it runs like a 587, 589, too quick for the six second bracket. But if I stutter it, I can pretty much park this thing on a six second pass. And at that point, you just have to cut a good light and hope the other guy screws up and you can win. Is that his trophy? That was, That's lovely. Why did it go under the roof? Yeah, you know, I reached oh, back to yeah. squirt fuel in it. I hit the bucket. Uh, so it went out, but luckily the way I have it set up, when I threw it back in the course, it was pulling me back. You're lucky, you got Bob. Lucky, Bob. We were really going to break it off in hey. That's I was trying to break it off. <laughs> luckily yeah. it broke there, though. Can you sign that so we can put it in the trailer? I got to take back measure first, but yes. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'd love your autograph. Yeah. Right here in this room. You look good going I, I got right sawed the hell off right I here by Mike Finnegan. And put it on a rotating piece where no, it's spinning around. Yeah. We'll spin some light at it, you know? Yeah, that blower didn't have a good one. Okay, go ahead. He made a good pass. Look at that on my way as soon as I started. Back to the drawing board. I'll try to beat Shell for you. Oh, yeah. Go pour. Tell him he's got to pull one plug wire. That might not be enough. 
we won our first round of eliminations in the heads-up class. We're now going to the bracket class. Round one, don't know who I'm racing, and I don't care. We got this. Let's go. Stiff wind coming from behind my boat going up the course. That means two things. It's not necessarily dangerous because the boat doesn't want to do a backflip when the wind's coming from behind it, but the water is the roughest I've seen all weekend. That's a little bit of a problem. So I may not leg this pass all the way out because my competition broke. I have a legal single, which means I go down the track by myself and I can't lose. I need to break the beams. As long as I break the beams, I win the race. Dude. Might as well just turn the stutter off because huh? we might as well just turn the stutter off because we don't need to slow down anymore. We need to get through all the <laughs> waves are out there. Oh three light, I think. Three light? Really? Yeah. You got a little help from God in the wind on that. No, one. no, that was all me. Close from my that's, just, manner, that's that's from the man upstairs, buddy. <laughs> that was all me. That, well, I'll tell you what. The man upstairs was helping you out because the 626 was like caca. Dude, that run was a mess. It's uh really windy now but it's a tailwind thank god which means you know if you're gonna have wind you want it at your back so you got your drag boat going right you're hauling butt and if the wind comes towards the front of the boat it lifts it up and you have a good chance of blowing over backwards and you know not going home but when it comes from the back all it really does is make the water rough so no big deal there except because the water's rough now the boat's taking big gulps of water from the waves, and you can hear the engine RPM go, wah, wah, wah. Every time it takes a big gulp of water, it just slows down a little bit. So we ran like a 626 or something on a 60 bracket. Um, didn't matter, because the other guy never showed up. I think he's broke. Um, so we're still in both classes, which is like crazy. It's like best week on a race I've had in a decade. <laughs> Chris Reed, our intrepid videographer and editor for Finnegan's Garage, just told me that my 003 light is the quickest reaction time of the entire weekend, I think I get a cookie. If not, I'm giving myself a cookie. Okay. Here's a little update for y'all. We won round one in both classes. And, uh, I think because we were number one qualifier in QE, we have a buy run this round. And I think that might just send us automatically into the final. The uh, wind has come up, the water is very rough. It slowed my boat down a bunch. So we just turned off all the stutter and we raised the wing on the front of the boat to make it a little safer. And 
We're about to run quick eliminator, six second bracket, find out what she runs with no stutter in very rough water. I like your boat, man, that thing's cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's had a lot of fun. Is it a nail head? No. Reduced one. 383, small block. Yeah, that thing's cool. Good luck. Thank you. You too. Water's a little better than it was the last round. Hey, look, a duck. Quack. <laughs> I've heard of people having pet ducks. I wonder what that's like. Because ducks are really cute. I don't know though. I don't know if that'd be like a, a pretty good pet. Granted, I'm comparing that to dogs. Dogs are great. Like, you come home, even if you've been gone eight minutes, when you come back, they treat you like you've been gone for three years. Just licking you and everything. All the love from puppies and dogs. I don't know if a duck would do that. That's the kind of stuff I think about when I'm out here by myself in the boat. Two green ones and a brown one. You guys are cute. If I had anything, if I had crackers, I'd throw them at you. I would. But I don't. I don't have any food in my boat. I just saw Shell. He's who we have in the final. Yeah. And uh, he's going to give us 25 minutes. We're supposed to meet him at the ramp at 3 o'clock for well, the final of uh, 6 6 They're letting six, boats six. go back. And then and what they right told now. me was so that's why oh, I was so talking got time. right after we do this, we'll go for QE final. What'd you leave on? Uh, I was a little late. I got distracted. Okay. I saw, I saw five, like okay. fully saw five before I went. So it was 0. 0.3. So. Still but not red. Green. Not red. Still in the green. Still in the green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can't win if we red light. No. Talking to the microphone. Um, that was better. We turned all the stutter off. The water was still rough, not as rough as before, and it ran a 598. Um, so now we have a, you know, we have a rough water tune now. No stutter, all the cowbell. It'll run real close to a 60. When the water's good, it's way too fast, so we need the stutter. But I think the rest of the day we're just gonna leave it the way it is. Finnegan, we're going to the finals, buddy. We're going to a final, dude. Unreal. Thank you. Thank you, dude. There you go. Oh, oh, three light. Got to be an O light. Okay. Leave it on six then. Here we go. This is the final round of our heads up class. Me against Shell Adams. He's got a tenth of on us in terms of ET, so I need to cut a better light. We got a chance. I like this. Let's go. I haven't raced anybody all day. Finally, get to. This is in the final round. Everybody, air's on, uh, switches up, getaways in, plugs are all out. Yeah, you have, have fun. You have fun. Have fun, dude. So cool. Shell Adams and I are in a final together. That is so cool. That is a good dude. I've known that guy for so long. We've gone to the river together, we've vacationed together. He is like, elite in terms of 
jet boat drag racing. That guy, all he does is win. Got it? Nice work. Thanks. That was fun. God, it looked like I was out on him. I wonder if I, I wonder if I red lit. Right at the end, he drove by me. Did it run a 6.0? 5.99 with a 7. <laughs> That's right there. And the guy oh. that just ran, he ran a 6.36. 4.14, shell went 4 flat. You had like a one three or one six. I think I left on him. You, you did. Right, right at the ahead. end, he, I, he he went by me. I was yeah. like, ah! <laughs> yeah. yeah, you had him by a tenth on the tree. Dude, we yeah. were hanging with him though. It was yeah, a close well, you race. You had him by a tenth on the tree, so. Hey, put some fuel in it. Let's roll. Yeah, that dude's sitting up there waiting us for the six second final. Let's recap. Um, came to Parker, signed up for two classes, milkshake the motor during testing. Fix that with some JB Weld, and now we've gone to the final of one class, and we're in the final of another class. And granted, one of these classes, we backed our way into the final because in round one, the dude broke. And because I was number one qualifier, in round two, I had a buy run. So this will be the first real test of can I beat somebody in a bracket race in a thousand foot course? Yes or no? Yeah, that was my light. It's good? Okay. Not a double O. And you want your goggles? <laughs> 5.99 with a seven. All right, we'll leave it alone and we'll go. Yeah. I'll just dump it at the end if he's not there. Yep. This is it. Last round of racing for today. This is the final of the six second bracket. We just ran a 5.99. We're real close to running the number. I don't know who the other guy is or what he does, but it doesn't matter. Let's go. Thanks, buddy. We're ready, Andy. You guys ready for this? I was like, oh no, too soon. Bro, what a weekend. Thank you. Right? That's what we did. It's time. That's what we did. Right. We went from, oh my god, we are screwed again. Yes. <laughs> two, two finals. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh uh, yeah, I'm blonde, red light, whatever. I am more stoked on a 6 triple zero. We'll frame that one. Oh, it's so black out the park. So right. Yeah. Right <laughs> uh, well, I guess we go to get trophies and stuff. Thank you. Um, you gotta go to see SoCal Jeffos to get your hundred dollars for the Master Action Time. Which, by the way, you already got it. Look at you. 
zero, zero, 003 for him, zero, zero, 001 for Chris Wassinger yesterday on the very first run of the day. First hit, bam, zero, zero, 001. I just did a bad job of redlining, let's be real. <laughs> but the $100 oh, takes the sting out of sucking and getting second place. <laughs> uh, I have really, really good friends, and they're all over here. I'm going to try not to cry. Because I wouldn't be here without them. So, I won't name all of you, but you guys rule. And everybody, that was really cool to us all weekend. Thank you all. I, you guys are legends. Like, Vince Nelson, dude, like, everyone here I've looked up to for years. So to be back racing is huge. Thank you. Yeah! Uh, real quick, I just want to tell a story about the guy that actually won this event. It won this class right here. I met this dude years ago on the Colorado River. And he had an Eliminator Daytona, and it, it really wasn't that fast. <laughs> just pause there for that, let it hang. Um, but this dude was the most committed jet boat drag racer I've ever seen. And now, that dude has a naturally aspirated jet boat that was running 390s out here. And it spins like 9,000 RPM and just sounds incredible. But that's not the story. The story is, one day at Lake Ming, it was really hot. It was June, it was like 100 degrees out. So we made a swimming pool in the pits. And the day I knew that guy was way cooler than everybody else was when he grabbed the CO2 bottle out of his boat and put it in our pool and made it into a jacuzzi. <laughs> that man is Shell Adams and he kicked my butt today. Congratulations. Well, that's it. We're done. Killer weekend. Oh my God. All of my friends were here. Somehow we took a boat that had water in the oil, fixed it with JB Weld, and managed to get runner up in two different classes. And to be honest, if I hadn't been such a yard sale on the starting line, we could have won one of those classes. But it doesn't matter. We're back, we're racing. I had the time of my life. And I want to thank Andy Rawls, Joe Cole, Randy Joyce, Austin Cole, everyone that was in our pit helping or just smiling and encouraging us. It was amazing. And we'll, we'll be back. We'll go racing again. And we'll try to bring you guys a W so you can watch that. And in the meantime, that boat's in one piece. I'm going to go home and hang out with my family. Thanks for watching. Joe Bedford, the girls go wild. You know what it is. He's a be best buddy of mine. They sold it to some creep for a couple million and then he got in trouble. That's the truth. Girls gone wild right there. Joe Bedford started right here at Lake Havasu. Appreciate you filming this, bro.